What's up, me head dealer with the Bullet Man? Guys, we're here in Freeport, New York, doing another installation. That's right, we're doing a 40 gallon hot water heater today. Guys, this is what I'm talking about. It's boiler season, it's water heater season, and I'm excited to bring this to you. So you can see whether to be a plumber and whether to be Louis the Boiler Man. Alright, me hit that. Let's get started. So, first thing is first, guys, you want to shut off the water feed going into the water heater. So, the main feed is always going, obviously going to be the cold water feed. So, I'm going to shut off the cold water. Usually, it's like this. We're going to close her up. And so, just so you guys know, when this is like this, this is parallel to the pipe. That means it's in the open position. When you do it this way, that means it's in the closed position. So, right now, it's safe to say that we both valves are closed. So, this is the cold water feed. It's in the closed position, just as well as the hot water feed. Sometimes it does happen that there's times that there's no valves here or there's only one. So the main one you want to shut off is always going to be the cold water side. But if there isn't any valves, unfortunately, you're going to have to go to the, to the source, which is the water main, shut it from there, and that shuts off for the whole home. But it is what it is. You have no other choice because if you do cut the pipe, guess what's going to happen? You'll make a mess of water. So you do want to let the homeowner know before you shut the water main that you're going to shut it off and it's for the whole house. So they're going to have to hold off on some water for about an hour or so. All right. So first things first, water supply, water supply going to the house. That's first. Second thing is you want to shut off the gas valve. It's very easy. It's an old style butterfly gas valve. You want to show it here, a pair of channel locks. And again, when this is in the parallel position, it means it's open. When it's in the side position or the horizontal position, that means it's in the closed position. And last but not least, guys, you want a drainer because this thing is pretty heavy. So guys, you want a connector. And this particular valve has, it uses a flat head uh, valve. I'm sorry. It uses a flat head screwdriver to open and close the valve. So. You're gonna open it up. Right now it's in the open position. We do have something called a pony pump that's right behind the gentleman right behind you, which is right here. And basically what a pony pump is, it's just a water pump that takes out the water. It just expedites the um, removing the water from the tank into a local drain or whether it's a floor drain or sink, it doesn't matter. So guys, you wanna remove the water because if you do not remove the water, it's gonna be very, very, very heavy for you to remove this hot water heater. So once we finish removing the water, now we're able to disconnect her, remove the gas piping, remove the cold and water feed, and actually remove the water tank physically. So let's take this journey together. Let's get started, baby. Wepa. Okay, me hit there. So guys, we're in phase two, which you guys can see the tank is already gone. So this is where, what you see left over. So guys, part of the job, just so you know, is cleaning. So right before you install the new tank, make sure everything is nice and level and is clean. Right now it's a little bit of a mess. We're gonna clean up the floor in a little bit. Make sure everything is level. You know, sometimes you do come across things like this because they actually built the floor around the, around the tank. So you may have to shim it or do something to make sure the tank is level. So we'll get to that once the tank is inside or it's in place. But first thing is first, it's clean. I cannot confess how important that is. That's part of your job, guys. Because if you don't clean, you know what the customer's gonna say? Great job, however, or but, it's dirty. And people get pissed off. Remember, you're in their homes. So you wanna do a great job, but you also wanna make sure it looks just as good as your job. In this case, we're talking about cleaning. So guys, this is phase two. So once it, the tank is in, then we'll take the measurements, the proper me measurements for the for the, su the supply for the wa hot water feed, and also for the cold water feed. Right now, can I tell you, because right now, any new hot water tanks um, compared to the old hot water tanks, um, they're slightly different. What I mean by that, the new water tanks are slightly more efficient. They're a little bit fatter. So a typical, or I want to say, uh, a standard, but typically they're about 18 to 20 inches in diameter on the older tanks, on the 40 gallon tanks. Now they're between 20 to 22 inches. So the actual spread of your piping is gonna be a little bit different. So guys, I cannot tell you it's gonna be an exact fit, 
but it's being very close. So you have to make some minor adjustments, whether it's the gas piping, your cold hot water supply, or your um, your exhaust piping. Okay, me hit there's one more thing I want to mention in the video that I didn't mention earlier in the video is I know I'm gonna hear from the actual plumbers and the plumber gonna say why is there no expansion tank so they're right there's supposed to be an expansion tank an expansion tank is basically a small little tank it looks something like this about a 15 gallon tank and what it's supposed to do is um, absorb expansion it has a diaphragm inside the tank and what happens is whenever you're heating water in your sealed system in this case let's say a hot water tank you're gonna create pressure and needs to expand, needs to, you know, that pressure gotta go somewhere. So you have an expansion tank. The reason why we didn't put her in this job is because the customer felt he didn't need the expansion tank because he never had one. So in his eyes, he don't he feels he, there's no need for it. But there is a need for it, there's a cold for it. Listen, sometimes what's supposed to happen in the field sometimes doesn't happen for all the odd, obvious reasons, but the point is it's supposed to have an expansion tank. I recommend putting an expansion tank, and whenever you put in an expansion tank, you're supposed to put it on the cold water side. And I would advise you guys, whenever you put an expansion tank, to put a valve there. So if you're the plumber, or you're the one who's going out in the field and you need to replace the expansion tank, it makes life so much easier just to close the valve, change the tank, put a new one in, open it, and you're on your way. And the faster you get the job done, the faster you make that money. So guys, before you say anything to me, or the plumbers out there, I don't know who you are, say anything, that's the reason why. But guys, this is what it is in the plumbing business. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose some. But the point is, at this job, he has hot water, which is most important. So he has a new tank, he has a warranty, and it's installed by Louis, Louis the Boilerman and New York's Best. So guys, it's very important to do the right thing, but sometimes things doesn't happen the way you want it to happen. So guys, we're gonna close out the show, we're gonna close out the installation. If you need a hot water heater, you need a boiler, who are you gonna call? You're gonna call this handsome stud, and you're gonna call this best, finest plumber all of New York, and you're gonna call him at 516-377-5200, and say, Louie, I need some hot water heat, and Louie the Boilerman can bring the heat, baby. Weba!